Generic greetings, fellow citizens of the internet. Today I give you something different. This is a custom map that I made a little while ago. Uh, I was holding off on making a video about it until I actually had some proper like gameplay footage and so forth when I actually play tested it, but it hasn't happened yet. So I'm just going to make this video spotlighting it and so forth and so on, informally and creative, and I'll make a proper video when I've got the proper materials. So this is grass versus mycelium. It is built off, it's a PvP sort of custom thing. Uh, think some kind of bizarre merging of everything from nail to CTM maps to like cluster chunk to all kinds of other random garbage. But, you know, all, all those sorts of general ideas sort of fused together in my mind into this bizarre monstrosity. But the general idea is it's more or less traditional PvP sort of action. Uh, going on. You got Team Grass versus your Team Mycelium, and it's, you know, battle to the death to some degree because whichever team kills off the other team or outlasts the other team wins. Um, and that's like the be all end all sort of ending condition is whichever team is alive at the end. If all the other team members, yeah, if everybody else dies, then the surviving team wins. Uh, so that's, you know, wonderful and happy and so forth and so on. Um, but the primary thing, uh, the primary point of the map and what makes it just a bit more interesting and adds an additional amount of strategy is the grass versus mycelium element. Uh, why grass and why mycelium, you might ask? Because grass and mycelium both have very similar properties. Uh, so if I grab some grass and grab some... where the heck is the mycelium? Where's the mycelium? Come on, give me mycelium. It's probably right in front of me. Yep, there it is. Okay. So, just for just for demonstration, or not even demonstration purposes, but just visual aid. Okay. Grass and mycelium. Now, grass blocks and mycelium blocks behave in certain ways, and they spread in similar ways. So, you know, you can spread grass onto dirt blocks adjacent and mycelium onto dirt blocks adjacent similarly. Um, they follow most of the same rules and don't have too many differing factors that would give one a significant advantage over the other um, in general. I mean, grass has certain properties such as you can use bones to use bone meal to on it to get seeds and flowers, uh, and mycelium can have mushrooms growing on it in full sunlight. I think those are the only differences, they, they're the only like advantages, but in this map um, they theoretically grow at roughly the same rate. Um, although it is random, so you can see that the mycelium grew there, even though the grass didn't. Um, in this map, um, and in this match, uh, it shouldn't matter, uh, even though there are those additional thingummies. But um, because the mechanics are very similar, I took advantage of that. Um, oh, and also the most important thing is you can't just sort of pick up one of these blocks. You can't just break it and pick it up. Break it, it becomes dirt unless you have silk touch. Um, and so, uh, let me, give, given, given that information, let me now present to you um, the, for, well firstly, the, um, this is the respawn zone and um, the starting area as well, so if you then um, decide that you want to be on Team Mycelium, hey guys, I'm going on Team Mycelium, yep, and then you're on Team Mycelium. This is the starting platform for Team Mycelium and uh, everyone on Team Mycelium will sort of crowd onto this platform until everyone is ready and then be able to get going. This uh, entrance area leads out into the collection area which is basically normal terrain except that it's got clay instead of dirt uh, or grass uh, but it's got all the basic resources, trees, passive mobs, sugarcane, sand, dirt, stone, ores underneath, so on and so forth. Uh, it's all there. But you've got these bedrock walls that are quite thick, um, and there are these little passageways worming their way through that don't always go where you expect them to and sort of um, provide a bottlenecked but alternate method of getting from place to place. Um, and then over here, uh, opposite the entrances, uh, in the home zone, this is the home zone, and that is void underneath. Uh, it's just completely wide open. Um, 
in this home zone area. Uh, opposite the entrances in the home zone, there is this single block of grass or mycelium. Since we're in the mycelium side, it's all magenta wool and uh, there's a mycelium block here. This is exactly the same on the other side, only rotated 180 degrees. Uh, so both sides get the same thing. Um, and so the idea is, given that block of mycelium, the challenge is to get that to these stone frames. Now these stone frames are basically the um, primary wind condition parameters, if you will. Whatever. Um, but if you are able to fill the entire thing up with grass or mycelium, depending on which team you are on, um, that's half of it. Uh, that That is the one half, and the other half is on the other side here. Uh, I should have given myself a speed potion or something so I could go faster, because this is indeed a larger map. Uh, not gigantic, but reasonably large. I think like 300 diameter or something. But yes, as you can see, it is exactly the same on the other side. And so you need to fill both of those in order to win. So fill both of those things with mycelium, if you are on team mycelium, or both with grass, if you're on team grass, as would stand to reason. So from there, uh, obviously there are two main ways of doing that. Um, so you, you can build some kind of crazy dirt um, line thing uh, from your single block over there um, all the way over, but obviously that would be very easily sabotaged and it would take absolutely forever. So there is a distinct, uh, yeah, there, there is definitely reason to go with the alternate method, which would be to, mm, yeah, use Silk Touch. You would need to get Silk Touch, which is a pain in the neck and late game sort of thing, but uh, in the long run, once you have it, it will, as long as you can, com as long as you can keep the other team from com completing the goal in the interim, it can be relatively quick indeed. Um, especially because you can just sort of farm grass or mycelium behind the scenes and then move it all in at once. However, things do get more interesting. Um, I might also mention this actually before I go into the more interesting, the um, grass farms that I planted um, more or less directly outside the doors of each of the things. Uh, the map is in fact um, the same, the collection zone is the same on both sides, uh, rotated 180 degrees, so this terrain is exactly the same somewhere over there, and you have the same farm provided on both sides. Um, anyway, it does get more interesting though, uh, because there isn't just that one block, really. That's the one main block, um, and probably the easiest to get to uh, for the most part, um, at least in some, some ways, but through here on both sides you've got one single block of the opposing team's material. So you've got one block of grass on team mycelium side of things. This is mycelium side and there is one block of grass and then on the opposite side you've got one block of mycelium on the grass side. So it is you, you, you have some motivation to try and infiltrate the other team's side of the collection zone uh, or get into some PvP to steal it away from them or something. And yes, it is a valid strategy to destroy the other team's blocks. If you can destroy all of their blocks, then bully for you. Then it just becomes a matter of destroying their beds and killing them. And then you can win. Um, or rather, like... Wow. Well, you could do that. You could do that, but um, they would then have to kill you. Uh, they wouldn't be able to win through um, placing their material. They would instead have to rely on killing you, all of you, um, or waiting until you die um, without beds. And so they'd probably have to get creative then. However, there is one more thing through here. 
Uh, there is, in fact, this one last chest, uh, which contains one mycelium and one grass. It is in the center of the map and would probably be very hotly contested. Um, it, it comes right through this uh, little... Yeah. One of, one of the little pock marks in the wall. So... Yeah, no, it's it's reasonably. I ju I just ran out of things to say. It's okay. Um, I I haven't really thought this completely through, but nevertheless, this is grass versus mycelium in more or less its final form, and hopefully, uh, I will get a chance to properly play test it at some point. Uh, hopefully with the folks from Pale Blue Dot. Uh, hopefully I can convince enough of them to play this with me and we can get a proper game going and see how it works. Uh, so I'm quite ex quite excited about that and hopefully I have covered everything necessary in the video. Uh, I could also mention, I, I might, uh, might as well also mention actually right now while I'm thinking of it, there is some impressive stuff going on, some crazy ravine action going on. Um, this goes pretty in depth. Ah, lag! Come on, lag! Stop! Stop! Uh, every time! Every time! Come! Come on! Don't! Don't! Don't do this to me, computer! Computer! Have I ever treated you wrong? Okay, thank you. I didn't think so. Okay, yeah, no, um, we've got two intersecting ravines right here coming off of this, um, one on the surface, so there are at least, I believe that I've counted that there are at least five or six ravines in this map that all sort of crisscross and intersect, uh, as you can see, and so that provides for some very interesting and relatively easy resource gathering. Um, so all in all, this is a map which took quite a bit of time, which I could easily spend a heck of a lot more time on, um, but which I'm holding I, I'm holding off on any of that until I've actually gotten it playtested and so forth, and I know more of what needs to be done to balance it or so forth. Uh, it would be uh, I, I I I imagine. I imagine that it would take quite some time to play a round of this. Uh, it wouldn't be something that could be just sort of done quick and easily. It's probably multiple hours um, of work, uh, of, of, you know, well, yeah, of uh, playtime uh, per session, although that will probably vary wildly, and it's very difficult to predict. There is no set time limit, so it could potentially go on very long indeed. Um, but simultaneously it could be completed relatively fast indeed if people got um, very lucky with enchants and so forth and got really good materials really early on, knew the map and so forth and so on. So hopefully that is um, hopefully that is enough of a spotlight of this map to give a general idea of where it's at and what it's like and look forward to hopefully being ho ho hopefully hopefully me doing some kind of something with, hopefully we'll be able to do something with it hopefully we'll be able to play it hopefully we'll have fun with it so on and so forth and hopefully it'll become big I'd love for it to become big but frankly I'd like to clean it up a little bit first uh, one way or another though uh, I will probably put a download link in the description uh, this is actually uh, available for download on Mediafire, so I'll pop a link to that in the description, and I guess that's about it. Uh, I might post a link as well to the post for this on the Minecraft forums that got relatively little attention and, you know, it didn't make any huge waves or anything. It was, you know, kind of anticlimactic, but whatever. Um, I didn't well, when, when I made this, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really into video making or anything, or I'd probably have uh, done some videos of 
uh, me making it. I was into video making, but not. I didn't. I don't think I had my channel or anything. So um, I was sort of in between phases. So I probably would have done some videos of it, but I didn't. So one way or another, here this is, and um, yeah. So go ahead and download the map, check it out, play it with your friends if you want, and you know, send, ideally if you could, like, send me feedback and so forth and so on if you've got ideas or um, criticisms or similar, then that might be good to hear. Um, but otherwise, I guess that's more or less it for now. So this is Richard. And yeah, with that, with all the Daleks, Queen Chrysalis, and Cthulhu himself as my witnesses, I bid you farewell for now.